बिल्कुल बिल्कुल ये रियली ग्रेट चलिए फिर शुरू करते हैं लास्ट सेशन गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन आई डॉक्टर प्रियंका कुलहरी वेलकम यू ऑल टू द लास्ट सेशन ऑफ डे थर्टीन एंड सॉरी फॉर दिस डिले देर वर सम इशूज सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू एम्बार्क ऑन ए कैप्टिवेटिंग एक्सप्लोरेशन ऑफ द टॉपिक दैट इज माबा ट्रेडिशन इन उत्तराखंड Uttarakhand a region known for its breathtaking landscape and vibrant cultural diversity has a rich tapestry of folk traditions that have played an integral role in communication storytelling and preserving the cultural heritage of its people the mahabharat traditions specific to this region are a prime example of how folk culture serves as a potent catalyst for connecting communities and conveying profound messages throughout history the mahabharat traditions in uttarakhand have been instrumental in bridging geographical divides preserving indigenous knowledge and fostering a sense of identity among its inhabitants these traditions which include folk music dance or storytelling rituals and festivals have allowed the people of uttarakhand to communicate their histories values and aspirations in a unique and profound manner Our expert resource person for this session will provide us with invaluable insights into the significance of Mahabharat traditions, shedding light on how these customs have facilitated communication and community bonding in this beautiful region. Now, I want you to share that feeling of uh, privilege uh, with me, which I am having, having such a great speaker with us. So, before we start, I would like to say a few words about Sir. <coughs> So uh, today we have Professor D R Prohit uh, with us. Sir belongs to a small village, Kili, in Rudraprayag district of Uttarakhand state, and uh, his journey from that small village to here that really talks about the evolution as a person, as you know, he has gone through. Uh, sir has done his master's in film and his uh, research uh, in the area of folk theatre, folk music, myths, and ballads. Sir is also associated with many academic institutions. He has a member with many of them, like he is member of American Studies Research Center, Hyderabad. He is member of National Folklore Support Center, Chennai. He is also a member of Uttarakhand Sanskriti Sahitya Evam Kala Parishad, Uttaranchal. Sir has also produced many theater and you know music productions. He has also written script for many plays. Uh, Uh, he has also acted in at least 20 plays produced by several theatre groups one of which was telecast in three episodes on doordarshan india uh, sir has directed many plays just to name a few uh, monkey's po panch bhai kathet uh, burdwa uh, nanda devi rajat okay sir has uh, is also you know uh, supervising many research scholar who are working in this field of folk theatre folk culture folk art and all he has almost 15 books published to his credit he has also delivered lectures into many seminars of national international repute he too has published papers he has also made many documentaries and films also on to folk theater a day of the mass dances is one of them he has also made this um, a 30 minutes documentary entitled just achievers which was also telecast on doordarshan pinkal sorry to interrupt you yeah you are reading you reading my cd cb which was probably published 20 years ago <laughs> <laughs> sir uh, you know i can't even read this much is so long i am just reading few things just to let the people know agar agar mai pura padhungi ab tak ka so i think session nahi le i will have to remove it from the google no it's very old how they could see anyhow thank you so much for introducing me philosophizing me glorifying me that i haven't done much you know you are much much more than that what i have said so really okay. thankful that you agree to this invitation over to you sir should i speak in hindi or english sir it would be better if you can speak bilingual okay so good evening everyone who is present there online i'm sitting here in the central himalaya the place called srinagar it is it lies 
halfway between Rishikesh and Badrinath. So we have a central university here where I worked for 40 years as professor of English and also as a professor of theater. I've also been a visiting professor to Heidelberg University. I've been to Princeton University, six universities, lectured in Princeton universities and six other universities of America and at least seven universities of Germany and 50 universities of my own country. <laughs> and recently, the government of India has honored me with Sangeet Natak Academy Award. And I have, the major work I have done is the documentation work. So Mahabharata is one of them. And Mahabharata is the rarest of the rare traditions of the central Himalaya. As there are about 16 variants of ritual Mahabharata here. And each one of them lasts not for less than 15 days. So this is very interesting. And another interesting about the locale about, of, the, of this Mahabharata tradition is, it lies between the boundaries of Himachal Pradesh and Nepal. But it is rarely found in the second catchment of Uttarakhand state. We have two catchments. One is Galwal, another is Kumau. So Kumau is called the Sharda catchment and Galwal is called the Ganga and Yamuna catchment. So this, these two drainage systems, it is the Uttarakhand states are divided between these two drainage systems. One is Sharda drainage system and another one is Ganga and Yamuna drainage system. So here we have very long ritual versions of Mahabharata. And one of them is the longest, which is sung for 62 days in a temple lying in Mandakini Valley, in Kedar Valley. I should call Kedar Valley because not many people know what Mandakini is, where Mandakini is, but it is the Kedar Valley. In the year 1996, I sat there in the temple and located two old singer, singers, Bachiram Bhatt, 68-year-old, and Kimanan Benjual, 75-year-old. They were the only surviving tradition bearers at that time. Therefore, I decided to document them. Sat there for 62 days in the months of Sravan and Bhadrapad, recorded their ballads, their songs, their hymns, and thereafter transcribed them into Garwali and then translated them into Hindi. And now we, the three professors, Professor Frederick Smith of Iowa University, William Essex of Heidelberg University and me, three of us are translating it into English. And we have successfully translated four books out of the total eight which we have documented from that place. The total number of pages in the transcript itself is 800. And translated into Hindi and English, it will go over to 1,200 pages. That is the longest Mahabharata there. And it is a very rigid, rigid text of Mahabharata, which is not open to innovations, interpolations, or any kind of deviation. This is, this is the speciality of that Mahabharata text. You have to follow very rigidly the tradition of that text, day by day, line by line, and chapter by chapter. So this is, this is fixed for 62 days. On the day number one, it will be sung for one hour. Then, on day number two, it goes over to two hours, then three hours, three, day number three, three hours, four hours, five hours, seven hours, eight hours. After eight hours, we come back to one hour. And after the one hour, again, go back to eight hours. And on the last day, that is the 62nd day, the text is rung, sung continuously for 14 hours. So it is a special style of singing. It has a 
space it is it is uh, allocated for singing to a certain community and class and caste and it is sung with utmost sanctity and piety which the singers and the devotees must maintain observe that is the system there so this is sung in different styles the mahabharata this text begins with the origin of the universe he swami ghora chandharo he swami jalathal manja ki swami andhakara manja theek hai how out of the deep darkness emerged the water and the and the water and the water forget that term which is water vortexes and out of that out of that vortex emerges adinath sambhu adinath sambhu gave birth to shakti adi shakti adi shakti gave birth to shiva vishnu and brahma and then they started creating procreating or creating the fish the toad the 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 birds and many of the systematically which you generally find in in the origin descriptions you find in the origin of the universe with that system they describe how things were things originated and how ultimately man and woman was created and how after the man and woman they created so many things they created one of the major reference to creation is the creation of mahur debal mahur debal means the temple of the gods and then they created rishi agrasen they created kansa they created devaki and after devaki we have the story of krishna devaki and vasudev and krishna the story moves ahead with the episodes related to the life of krishna and then on to the episodes of mahabharata there are about 179 themes dealt with in this mahabharata which are rarely found elsewhere it begins i have sorry i have a problem with my throat today it, it developed only yesterday evening बोल भाई क्या भूल कैसी बारे आओ सूरज जो स्वामी जी उदय हुए गन बियोजला जो ब्रह्मा माला देवा बियोजला जो दिस इज वन स्टाइल एंड अदर स्टाइल इज कि भूल भाई भूल कैसी बार सूरज स्वामी उदय हुए गन क्या बो जल दूरदर योदा की बो जल जो भीम योदा भड़ो दिस इज वन स्टाइल एनदर इज स्टाइल इज जल्ला राख्यो पात बोल भी आई रात बिजी जावा बिजी जावा जल नाथ जल ये टेनदर इज को देव हाल हलंत को देव झाला जलंत आगे से ओढ़ा सरन तो पीछे से बीठा खड़न तो डिफरेंट स्टाइल्स ऑफ सिंगिंग वी प्रिपेयर सम हंड्रेड कैसेट्स वी रिकॉर्डेड सम हंड्रेड कैसेट्स एट द टाइम एंड देन वी ट्रांसक्राइब देम वी स्टिल हैव सम 14 और 15 ऑडियो कैसेट्स अवेलेबल विद अस सो दिस इज वन लॉन्गेस्ट महाभारत एंड अदर लॉन्गेस्ट परफॉर्मिंग महाभारत इज पांडव डांस ड्रामा we have a pandav ritual which runs minimum from for 15 days and maximum for 90 days in a single village and this pandav dance ritual is held almost in almost 2000 villages of gadwal 2000 villages and in in, in the in that pandav dance ritual you have so many rep- episodes for example for the first on the first day they take out the vanas attributes of pandavas and before i talk about this episode let me tell what do why do they say why what do they say about this the origin of this tradition in garhwal there is a story most of us have, have heard that pandavas were 
charged of patricide, greatest of all sins. They killed their own cousins, they killed on their relatives. So it was called fratricide, Gotra Hatya. In order to remove the sin of Gotra Hatya, they were advised to go to Lord Shiva, who could exonerate them from the sin. They went to Kasi, Lord Shiva didn't want to see, even see them. And he, he evaded their presence in Kashi and he started running towards the Himalaya. They chased him, chased him into the valleys of the Himalaya, into the valley, ultimately into the Kitar Valley, where Lord Shiva hid himself at many places. And ultimately at Kedarnath, he transformed himself as a buffalo. And there were many buffaloes grazing together in order to detect the real buffalo, Lord Shiva. Bhima spread his legs across the mountain slopes and wanted to see which of the buffalo doesn't cross the legs. <laughs> so one of the buffaloes, who, in order to evade crossing these legs, human legs, he sunk himself or dipped into the earth and only the hind part of the buffalo could be seen, the Pandavas, which later on became the Kedar Jyotirling. It's then they, they kept on pursuing him. They 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 look at they located Lord Shiva at Tunganath. There they saw just his arms. They they chased him up to Madhya Maheshwar where they could just see the middle part of his body. Then they went to Rudranath where they could see the face of Lord Shiva, and ultimately they went to uh <laughs> I tell you which last Nath is that I'll, I'll recall the Nath. So there they saw the, the, the locks of Lord Shiva. And thereafter, it was after the Mahabharata war, they had to go to their ultimate journey, journey of death. And they started trekking up to the treacherous sloops of mountain that Swarga Rohini. On the trek of Swarga Rohini, they started dying one after another. The first to die was Draupadi, then Nakul, and then Sadev. And then it was the turn of Arjuna. Arjuna, before his death, took out his Gandiva, aimed his arrow, and tied all the weapons of the Pandavas, the Gada of Bhim, the mace of Yudhishthira, the party, the, the slate of Yudhishthira, and everything, the Katar of Draupadi, onto his Vana, onto his arrow and threw his towards the valleys and said, he, he said, okay, I wish I could live this life again because it was the autumn and there was green and greenery everywhere around this. I wish I could have a second time to live, but that was not possible. So therefore he said, okay, my arrows and my attributes, hereafter you, we will be worshiped. We will be remembered in the shapes of these arrows. And every, whenever you call us, our spirits will revisit you, whosoever is living there. So that is, that is, that is why. In the Kedar Valley, Pandavas do not have any icon. They don't have any murti. They have just arrows. They have the mace. Their weapons as attributes of Pandavas. And these weapons are worshipped as Pandavas. And for many days, the dance is held. The dancers who are embodying Pandavas, we have the embodiment of Yudhishthira, embodiment of Bhima, the embodiment of Arjuna, embodiment of Nakul and Sadev and Draupadi, and also the embodiments of wife of Bhima, Tilmali, embodiment of wife, wife of Arjuna, that is Draupadi, and some one more lady is there, Uchringa, she is also the wife of Arjuna. So they all of them are embodied, they embody on the human body and then they dance then they are also possessed by the spirits of the Pandavas. So continues twice a day in the afternoon and after the dinner in the even, late evening the dances are held and then the dances are held in a series in the first series the, the, those who are donning as Pandavas, wearing the clothes of Pandavas, they dance without weapons Thereafter, everybody has an old ma, ma do you call, do you call every, every common man is allowed to dance around the circle 
because they also get trained. They are the future trans dancer being trained. And in the third sequence, it is the Pandavas again with their arrows, with their bows and with their maces and with their cousins. So this is the sequence of dancing in the daytime and the evening. It continues minimum for two hours every day in the, in the afternoon and in the evening, okay? So this is, this is the system of dancing. And they say whenever, they say the Pandavas revisit their kins in the valleys. And in Gadwal, it is a general belief which has also been established, which has been established as theory by William S. Sex in his book, Dancing the Selves, Pandavlila, Performance of Gadwal. That is the title of his book, William S. Sex. It has been published by Oxford in the year 2002. So they, it is, it is believed by the Kshatriyas of Garhwal that they are the descendants of the Pandavas and therefore they recreate rituals for the Pandavas. And they say, since they are the descendants of the Pandavas, they hold a Sraddha ritual at the river bank. It is, it is, it is, it is compulsory for every Pandava Leela to hold the Sraddha ritual at the river bank or at the water side. And there at the water side and river bank, Pandu's Sraddha is performed by his biological sons, Nakul and Saidev. And the village headman performs the Sraddha for all the Pandavas whom he considers his ancestors. This ritual, this Sraddha ritual is called Ganda. Ganda means the rhinoceros ritual. Rhinoceros is significant here. If you have happened to know something about Dharma Sindhu, the Dharma Sindhu prescribes the best kind of pavitri, best kind of ring for offering tarpan to our, to our ancestors is wearing the hide or wearing the hairs from the snout of a ganda of a rhinoceros. And wearing it on your second ring, second finger, you, you offer the Sraddha Tarpana to your Purvaja in the same way we also offer Sraddha Tarpana to the Pandavas and Pandu. And the significance of this part or these, these hairs or this hide of uh, the rhinoceros says that the snout of rhinoceros, rhinoceros is considered to be highly aphrodisiac. And Aphrodite, an aphrodisiac ingredient is helpful in perpetuating the generations. So that is the significance of an aphrodisiac in human life. Therefore, it is a symbol, it is a metaphor for, for it is metaphor used for, for, for uh, by way of Sraddha Tarpana for the perpetuation of human life or human generations, which otherwise in absence of this, this desire will die out any moment. Yeah. So Sraddha Tarpan is held, and so many other episodes are held during the Pandava Nritya, Pandava dance drama. The episodes are the first episode is taking out the weapons. The second episode is the bringing a pillar from the Khandha Prastha, that is called Morudwar. The third episode is the Chakravyu where Abhimanyu was killed, then is Kamal view. It is a big, large-scale mass drama which is held in the fates and attended by some 15,000 audience. The second dramatic theatrical episode is Kamal view in which Jayadrath was killed. The episode, third episode is Makar view in which Karna was killed. The fourth episode is Garud Bhu, in, in which Uttara, the son of Virat, was killed. Then we have Lakshagre, one of the episodes is Lakshagre. And then thereafter, it is, uh, they go to the river bank for a snan, for a sacred bath. And there at the river bank is held the Sraddha Tarpana. And when they come back, they organize the drama of Ganda. Ganda is a, has a separate in, in, it has a, an interesting episode how Ganda was killed by Arjuna. How Ganda was reared by his own son Nakarjuna. 
and when he killed the Genda Nagarjuna, killed his own father Arjuna. Anyhow, Nagarjuna's mother saved his life by recognizing his face because the son would not know who the poacher was. It was his own father, though in the battle Arjuna is killed. And thereafter he takes the head of Arjuna to his mother who recognizes Arjuna and see with the help of magical powers, revives Arjuna and then Naga, Arjuna and Arjun fight together in the Mahabharata war. This is the rare example of or rare example of the war battle fight between the father and son and then revival of the father. And then they working together, fighting together. Then we have the episode of killing of Duryodhana. And then the last episode is going to Swarga, Swarga Rohini. I have collected some 60 episodes, theatrical episodes from the Mahabharata performances, Pandava performances of Garva. They are held in different places and different valleys. And almost all of them are held in the month, in the, uh, just after the Hari Bodhani, Ekadashi. Hari, uh, Hari Bodhani, one is Hari Shaini Ekadashi, another is Hari Bodhani Ekadashi, which is held just as, uh, so just 11 days after our proper Deepavali, the pan Indian continental Deepavali, that is called Hari Bodhani Deepavali. Just after the Deepavali, they start holding Pandav dances. If you ever happen to visit the Kidar Valley, you will find some 30 villages which are holding together Pandav Lila at different places. So I told you that it is almost in 2000 villages that Pandav dance drama or Pandav dance ritual is held. And not not every year. It is it is it is sometimes it is held after the three years and sometimes after six years, but regularly after three years. And in some villages it is held regularly every year. So this is very interesting that this is such a vast expansion of Pandava Mahabharata in these valleys, and it is widely participated. And the largest of all rituals is the Pandava Lila ritual. Besides Pandav Lila ritual and the Pandav Mahabharata, which, which I told you, the thousand page Mahabharata, which was sung in different places, different temples of Kedar Valley. One of them was the Agasthmuni temple, another one the Rasi temple, yet another was Silla temple, and the last one was Kalima temple where this Mahabharata was sung once upon a time. Now it is sung ex only in one temple, that is the Rasi temple. And that, that, that version is not so authentic as Agastmani version was. Besides these two variants of Mahabharata, we have Krishna Leelas. We have the, we, we have the narrative, of, narrative and ritual of Balaram. Somewhere near Guptakasi, you, you have heard of the name of the town Guptakasi, very close to Guptakasi. There is a village called Thuri, then after the Balram ritual, they hold the ritual of Krishna. Whole night, the Krishna Gatha is sung around these very villages around Son Prayag. There's a village called uh, yeah, Ravigram. Another village is Dev Devashal. And yet another village is Andravadi. In these three villages, we have the story of the birth of Krishna and the crisis created by. Uh, his his mama, his maternal uncle, Kansa is sung every every third year. So in every village it is sung every third year. But if you happen to go there, it's one of the three villages is holding that ritual for 15 days. And at the end of the ritual, they 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 make images of of that Bhimata, Bhimata, who is the originator, who is the creator. She the female. Is the she power of sending children to this earth, and therefore the children's when whoever wants a child, whoever is issueless, holds this ritual in his house for 15 days, and thereafter this couple is blessed with a child, whether male or female. So it is held for 15 days, and this ritual is called Bhimata. Throughout this ritual, I told you. The story of Krishna and the story of Kansa is sung, and then also the story of Mabhi Mata, 
the old mother who creates children and sends them to the earth therefore whenever we see the babies smiling without reason we say that be mother the mother that she created is just tickling them and they they smile this is the belief and we have a huge festival held all over garhwal which is called full day festival throughout the month of chatra the children in memory and veneration of that she creator they sprinkle flowers every door step singing song phula du goga mata phula phul de de mai dal chol for eight days and somewhere for 20 days they sprinkle these flowers in the month of chatra from first of the chatra to the eighth of chatra and somewhere from the first of chatra to the 30th of chatra they sprinkle flowers singing songs collecting grains and sweet meats and money and then ultimately on the last day they hold a long feast the children so this is a children's festival flower festival they hold a long feast and in that feast they also enact the roles of a tiger a leopard and a goat in order to remove that 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 what do i i tend to miss the words that neurosis of fear about leopards <laughs> so that kind of festival is held not only in garhwal but that is also held in kumau division that is called full day festival and now they have been holding these festivals law at the large scale in the in the local towns so this is i told you bimata then we have a very long ritual festival processional festival of this babareek the festival of barbree who was beheaded by krishna and mahabharata or everybody knows the narrative myth of barbree barbree who was there to fight on the side of party which was losing the battle therefore krishna killed him and his trunk his trunkless head was held high nowhere in the sky he wanted to watch the mahabharata war and after the end of the mahabharata war as our myth goes krishna said okay barbari i killed you i did injustice to you i'll take you the holy land of the himalaya and i'll consecrate you at different places in the himalaya he, he gave the charge to bhima bhima felled the tall, tallest of all tall trees as kajla kharak near dhoti near the chopta dhoti da tungna and took him around to different sacred separate sacred places then badrinath etc were not there but other sacred places were there so therefore as a copy as a repetition of that myth as a recreation of that myth they hold a ritual for barbareek in 12 villages of alaknanda valleys near valley near joshimat that ritual is called the jaak ritual processional ritual the the head of the image of the head of yaksha or barbari is hoisted on the top of a log and it is decorated with 62 miraculous properties of the himalaya and it is taken around to some 200 villages then it becomes a social affair where soever the married sisters of that village live or where so ever this village this jag devta has a relationship with other gods to all these villages this jag procession is taken out for six months its narrative is sung its ballad is sung and every day in the night wherever the procession stops after the dinner when the god has been sent to sleep there comes in the arena the procession of masks a mass dance drama is held for 3 to 4 hours which is got the patar performance or the patra performance patar is a corruption on the word patra patra means actors in the beginning appears the humorous character of narada and narada invites all other characters in the arena they show their performance and these characters are for example ganapati ganesh badi veda kanano lata lati ram krishna and sita nrsingha avatar 
The South are, are also enacted during that procession as part of these mask dance dramas. So the huge system of performances who go around traveling from village to village, stop somewhere in the night, show mask dance drama there. And this that has to be shown mandatorily. Come what may, the storm of the snow, storm of the snow, in the night, they have to show the performance. Even if there is no audience, they have to show the performance. That is the system there. And on the at the end of it, they hold a nine-day huge ritual there. And then the, after the ritual, this god Baburik is given goodbye. So this is I, I told you this is the third kind of Barbarik Mahabharata. Then we have we have this Krishna Mahabharata, Mahabharata at another place. We have the Kans Mahabharata. Kans is also a deity here as a penance because Krishna did the, the kind of fratricide by killing his own uncle, his own mama. Therefore, he promised him a ritual. And that ritual is a Kans ritual. That is also a processional ritual. And that is also held for six months. And that also stays as these mask dance dramas every night. Where, where the procession stops. And thereafter, we have yet another <laughs> variant of Mahabharata, that is Abhimanyu Mahabharata, that is, that is, that is ritualized or that is reenacted in many places of Terry district, that Abhimanyu Mahabharata, at 12 places. This Abhimanyu, who was enslaved in, in the Red Fort, as the story goes, is he seeks his release from there and then he travels from Garhwal and settles at 12 places of Garhwal. It is called Ghandial Mahabharata. It is called Ghandial Mahabharata. Then we have one more variant that is Kunti Mahabharata. This is also held for six months. That Tamlag, Mori, that, that is called the Mori Mahabharata of Tamlag in Pori district. So then we have the Devara, Devar, this Karna Mahabharata that is celebrated, it is a temple that dedicated to it in a village in Tons Valley. Tons is a tributary of Yamna. So in the Tons Valley, the temple stands, the, the temple of Karna, Karna is the Shila Raja. He travels to 22 villages. And wheresoever he travels and stays, he invites five Brahmanas and gives golden gifts to these five Brahmanas. He's a Shila Dani. <laughs> So this is also interesting. So we have this Karna Mahabharata and then we have uh, two more variants of Mahabharata. Most of them are Krishna, Krishna variants. So this is, this is the total corpus or this is a total domain of Pandavas or the Mahabharata story in Garhwal, which is very popular and at many places that at many platforms have declared that the largest folk Mahabharata of the world exists in Garhwa. <laughs> and not not the not the small no small episodes. Every episode lasts not for than 15 days, and the maximum time is six months. So that way it, it becomes very significant, very important to understand it and then recently I have discovered a new Mahabharata that is Vishwakarma Mahabharata how this universe was created by Lord Bhagavan the Mama and Vishwakarma the Bhanja and at the end of how, of the creation how Mama and Bhanja were separated that is also Mahabharata that, that also describes the entire almost all the episodes of Mahabharata so it becomes very interesting. This is all I want to say about this Mahabharata and this Mahabharata. Many scholars, many foreign scholars, many Indian scholars, many of my students are working on these several and interesting themes of Mahabharata documentation, its narratology, its mythical structures, its, its uh, Gramercian uh, you know, anything they like, they are working on it. So because you are free to work on anything you wish, and this is most of the themes are subversive themes on which, on the on the instance of this Harvardian philosophy, the scholars have been working. 
So that is all I want to say. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, sir. That was very enlightening, very detailed, and uh, you know, very informative. Uh, like you talked about these different variants of Mahabharata, I was completely unaware of. Uh, so just a few uh, queries. Uh, that would be great if you can shed some light on that. First thing, because you said uh, that you are more into documenting, you know, um, these folk uh, art. So uh, what challenges and what obstacles, what problems have you faced while you were documenting these, you know, different variations of Mahabharata? Oh, great, oh, many problems. I tell you when I organized the meeting, it was for 25 years, this Mahabharata temple, Mahabharata was stopped because of certain nuisance, which is, was created in the night by the local drunkards and nuisance makers, rowdy elements. They had stopped for 25 years. I requested my vice chancellor to help me in, in documenting that Mahabharata tradition. He gave me a green signal. I went to the place, but the old man, 75 year old man, Kimanand Benjol said, sorry, I'm so old. I cannot sit there for 62 days regularly. Once we start, we cannot stop. And then another man, there was a very energetic man, Bachiram Bhatt. He was 68 year old. He, he was ready to sing the song or to sit there in front of the temple all through the time. Then I, I organize a meeting of the citizens of that small town, some 20 people who were interested in having the documentation of that Mahabharata system. They were collected together and they requested the old man and the young 68 year old man said, Bhai sahab, Bhai sahab, aap himmat kije, maa aapko support karunga. Then the another said, Bhai sahab, koi baat ni, bimar bhi ho jayenge, dekh lenge, beech mein dekh lenge. Okay? Then there was a very learned man, very knowledgeable man, Rajendra Goswami. He was, he's also a technical man who organized the recording, who organized the micro, uh, this public address system, who also arranged medicines and proper food for these old men because they, they, they had to be given a special kind of food. So everything was done. And I sat there for 62 days. In the meanwhile, the old man Kimanand Benjwal had a baby born of his son. And therefore it became a sutak there in the family. He could not sit in front of the temple. Therefore another a small tent was arranged for the singing of that song for seven days. It was all the, it, it was, the, it is sung during the rainy season, you understand, Savan and Bhado. So I was stung by mosquitoes every night they're sitting there. So there was a great problem and there was a problem of transcribing these songs on thousand pages. But luckily one of the singers, Bachiram Bhatt, who happened to be a retired teacher, he accepted that challenge and he transcribed all the songs from the audio cassettes to the register. Then there's something very human, something, the, the social problem which lie, always lies there. But Chiram Bhatt said, okay, I have done it for you. I don't need any money, but get my son employed in the university. I tried my best I, for two years. I kept on doing it, but I failed. I could not employ son. And then he cursed me, look, okay, you gave me some 10,000 rupees. I've asked for a deer and you asked me the deer skin. You gave me the deer skin. So I, I feel always sorry for that event, but then it so happens. And is a, is a, it's always in the game. Okay, that was one problem at many other places where I was documenting these Mahabharata episodes. People raised objections against it. They would say, why do you want to record them? You want to make some audio albums out of it. You want, then you want to sell them. You want to mint money out of it. <laughs> and then I had a great problem in tr after transcribing the text in translating it into Hindi because they were very archaic words used in, in, that, in, in that narrative. But anyhow, we succeeded. I employed some three of my students 
for the translation and they kept on i kept on guiding them the meaning of the sentences meaning of the terms and that way it happened and still i have a problem in translating it remaining five books of mahabharata into english and the problem of course you know priyanka is going to a village a known village where nobody knows you where we where there is no guarantee of food and many times i had to have a difficult time and sleeping and having food and other things but most of the times people are very hospitable to me very kind and respectable to me that's why i succeeded in doing it yes thank you sir i think it was a determination that you are going to document that that you overcome all these obstacles and Many. came with this uh, which Otherwise, other might have been lost. Yeah. So one more uh, question: that uh, in what ways these uh, uh, traditions of Mahabharata serve as a catalyst for community bonding or uh, unity in, uh, you know, in the people of uh, Uttarakhand? Just, just before, just in the beginning, you were you were saying that how do they communicate to the society? That that question also you raised, no? binding together is you have to hold a 90 day ritual together even if you have fallen fallen in quarrel with someone with your neighbor with your own brother therefore because it is a community ritual you have to compulsorily be part of it you have to compulsorily rub your shoulder with your brother with your with the man you have fought against or you have fallen out with and therefore the community has to bind together it is only during these rituals that every member of the community is got brought pulled together to participate together in the ritual and forget the animosity which so ever there has been so this is one thing and how does it communicate communicate means it is these things become the that are mute over the examples or the inspiration for the devotees for example may I, i cite one last line from the mahabharata on the only last day of the pandava ritual there comes up a regular singer on the arena and he says sings he dharm bani जो भाई घोड़ी ताजा रो घोड़ी मीस दिस हॉर्स ऑफ लाइफ घोड़ी ताजा रोली तो फिर भेंट होली और घोड़ी हारी जाली तो या भेंट हुए गए इफ द हॉर्स ऑफ लाइफ इज सरवाइव नेक्स्ट टाइम विल मीट अगेन एंड इफ इट डजेंट सरवाइव दिस इज द लास्ट मीटिंग वी हैव हैड सो दिस दिस काइंड ऑफ फिलॉसफी एट एवरी स्टेप इन एवरी लाइन देयर इज अ काइंड ऑफ फिलॉसफी स्पोकन आउट एंड इट पुट्स देम टुगेदर इट इट एस्टैब्लिशेस अ काइंड ऑफ रिलेशनशिप the pandava of kandava cup kandara village have a relationship with the pandava of basti village therefore they are connected take <laughs> the pandavas or kandara village when go they go down to the river side for snan they stay at 12 villages this is the duty this is the historical duty of these 12 villages to become host to that visiting party so we they, they are connected together everywhere yes बहुत ही बखूबी कहा कि ये वो धागा है जो इन सब को बांध के रखता है डिफरेंट रिचुअल्स के फॉर्म में Uh, so there is one question from one of our uh, participants um 
इस बाई डी एस नेगी वो कह रहे हैं कि सर मे यू प्लीज थ्रो सम लाइट ऑन एरोड पांडे पांडव लीला एंड नॉन एरोड पांडव लीला रिचुअल्स एरोड नेगी जी का क्वेश्चन है क्या क्वेश्चन है एरोड पांडव लीला आई थिंक जहाँ पे शायद वो पांडव लीला जिसमें वो एरोज को अगर कोई नेगी जी को अनम्यूट कर दें तो आई थिंक वो अपना क्वेश्चन बेहतर तरीके से रख पाएंगे समझ रही है प्रणाम सर प्रणाम प्रणाम बताए नेगी जी क्या क्वेश्चन है अरे ये तो हमारा दर्शन <laughs> बहुत अच्छा लगा सर आपको देख करके आज <laughs> और बहुत देर से सुना सर वैसे तो बातचीत आपसे होती रहती लेकिन आज एक व्याख्यान के तौर पर बहुत समय बाद एम की क्लासेस मुझे याद आ गई है कि आप किस तरह से ये सब चीजें अलग अलग कॉन्टेक्स्ट में शेक्सपियर के साथ पढ़ाया करते थे तो आपके व्याख्यान सुनते हुए एक सवाल मेरे दिमाग में आया सर की जो में तो खुद पांडव लीला होती है नहीं नहीं मैं तो मेरे दिमाग में अच्छा नहीं क्वेश्चन है कि कहा कहीं बाण वाली होती है और कहीं बिना बाणों वाली होती है उसका थोड़ा कॉन्सेप्ट समझ सीक्वेंस होती है बाणों और बिना बाणों की सीक्वेंस होती है जब पहले जब पांडव पहली बार अवतरित होते तो बिना बाणों के नृत्य करते हो ठीक है और वो उसमें पजेशन भी आता है ठीक है उसको मंगलाया जाता है तुम्हारे यहाँ भी केदार घाटी में कि ये धर्मराज युधिष्ठर तुम्हारो मातो हाथ रे हम हारियानी हारिया मारियानी मारिया हे प्रकट हो जा मेरा राजा युधिष्ठर ठीक है ये उसके बाद जब एक सीक्वेंस हो जाती है फिर आम आदमी कहीं का हमारे यहाँ उसको कहते हैं आप फालतू नाचेंगे फालतू मतलब एवरीबॉडी ठीक है तो सारे नाचते हैं और तीसरा जो सीक्वेंस होता है फिर बाणों के साथ नाचते हैं तो उस समय कोई भी एंट्री उनके बीच में नहीं कर सकता बहुत बहुत सेक्रेट होता है ठीक है वो भी बात सर एक और क्वेश्चन है हमारे पार्टिसिपेंट है तारा तारा इज द मोस्ट रेगुलर पार्टिसिपेंट्स हर वक्त वो जुड़ी रहती हैं उनका क्वेश्चन है शी इज़ कॉम्प्लीमेंटिंग ऑन योर सेशन सेइंग व्हाट एन एनलाइटनिंग सेशन सर माय क्यूरियोसिटी इज अमंग दीज मेनी वर्जन्स ऑफ महाभारत व्हिच वन इंट्रिग यू द मोस्ट एंड व्हाई वाइब्रेंट वर्जन वही है पांडव नृत्य का जो लगभग दो गांव से ज्यादा में होता है और मिनिमम पंद्रह कुछ गांव ऐसे हैं पिंडर घाटी में जहाँ पंद्रह दिन तक ही नृत्य होता है या वहाँ अपने जौनसार में लेकिन हमारे यहाँ केदार घाटी में कोई गांव ऐसा नहीं है जहाँ पैतालीस दिन से कम का पांडव नृत्य होता है बहुत लंबा होता है और सबसे सिग्निफिकेंट जो वर्जन है जिसमें जो विच कैन बी शो केस्ड एज द मेजर वर्जन ऑफ महाभारत दैट इज पांडव लीला हिमालय की सेंट्रल हिमालय की मैंने रामलीला पे काम किया है मैंने होली में किया है काम मैंने नंदा देव राजा पे किया है मैंने महासो ट्रेडिशन पे काम किया है मैंने नैन ट्रेडिशन पे काम किया है मैंने लगभग ऑलमोस्ट आई हैव टस्ट अपॉन एवरी ट्रेडिशन कल्चरल ट्रेडिशन ऑफ दिस रीजन थैंक यू सर एंड अब समय इशारा कर रहा है सेशन को खत्म करने का बट इट वाज रियली वंडरफुल सेशन यू मेड अस अवेयर ऑफ दिस डिफरेंट वर्जन्स ऑफ नहीं आप आइए हमारे यहाँ हरिबोधनी हरिबोधनी एकादशी के बाद आप सब लोग आमंत्रित हैं हो सकता है दर्शन सिंह नेगी के गांव में भी पांडव नृत्य हो रहा होगा जरूर सर प्रिंसिपल सर से बात करके ट्रिप प्लान करते हैं हम सब ओके थैंक यू सो मच वंडरफुल सर अगर आप चैट बॉक्स में देखेंगे कॉम्प्लीमेंट एवरी वन इज मेमराइज by your session they all loved it uh, like anything so 
So now it's time for, uh, to convey formal vote of thanks. Again, thank you so much, sir, for accepting our invitation and coming here and enlightening us about this one tradition, which many like me were unaware of. Really, thank you for that. I also thank our principal, sir, who is a driving force behind every experiment or any such innovation which we want to you know, uh, undertake. I also would like to thank our IQSC coordinator, Professor Vinita Tuli, uh, and her team, uh, Anjali Ma'am, uh, they all worked on to this project and made it successful. Mm -hmm. I also would like to thank you, my uh, is, technical you know, this uh, is partner. Green, this uh, is Mitch. green tea. This is green tea, nothing else. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, Amit, who has been with us for this smooth functioning of this technical session. And obviously, thank you so much, participants, for your active and, uh, you know, that uh, wonderful participation and your uh, contribution to the session to, you know, get to know, like your queries, they really make it more uh, detailed. So thank you so much for putting up your queries, your observations and your questions. Thank you so much. And with this, we come to the end of this day. Uh, we will meet you tomorrow again at two o'clock. So till then, thank you everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you friend Gazi and thank you everyone. Thank <laughs> you.